Hello friends! So let's think about module 4 and what it is that we're trying to accomplish in this next portion of your final project. So now that you have thought about the creator, now we're going to think about something that that creator has produced and we're going to consider its effect on society and uh, how society has been influenced by the work. Okay, so the first thing, of course, is that you're going to have to think about the creative works of your creator. And for me, what I would suggest is that you don't get too crazy with it. You know, if you have a, a, an artist like a, a singer or a musician and they have multiple albums and you don't need to do all of them. Focus on two or three songs that you can really point to and say, hey, these really have influence. I think that's going to help focus your project and move it forward in a really particular way that I think is going to be helpful with we, when we get to these questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these questions and I'm actually going to use uh, a piece of art for something that uh, is way outside of anything y'all are going to be doing. So stick with me on this. So I'm going to be talking about a play from the Middle Dutch period called Marieken van Nijmegen. Now immediately some of you just went, I am not listening to another word. What does any of that mean? Okay, so this is a play that was produced by something called the Rederijkers. And that was, these were groups of people who were merchants and really important businessmen who would get together and write plays and then perform them for each other. And one of the things that they, the most famous one they did was a, a story of Mary von Nijmegen and Mary of the town of Nijmegen, who in the play is seduced by the devil and she is taken away by the devil for seven years and then miraculously released at the end of seven years. So we're going to talk about this from these questions. Okay, so describe the relationship between today's society and the selective creative work. Now, I chose a hard one for this on purpose. The ones that you're doing are pretty easy. We can still talk about the things that are involved. But one of the things about this one is the idea of being tempted away from what you know is right. And we're in a society, if I was going to talk about this in terms of these questions, What's been the reaction of the society to the work? I mean, this was something that went all around the world when it was first. It, there was actually just discovered in Syria in a, in, a, in a cave a copy of this play that had been translated. So it was an incredibly important uh, play in terms of spreading this idea around the world. But what's this reaction today? Nobody knows it. We've, thought, we've forgotten about it, but many of those principles behind the work are still around. Things like, we need to be careful who we listen to. That's certainly present today in our social media with ideas of misinformation and disinformation coming through. Bots going through and projecting certain ideas into our social media and that sort of thing. So, who reacted to the work? Well, in the society that this particular play came into, and some of you are doing older works from artists way back, this was a world where the Catholic Church specifically ruled Europe. And so it was about the Catholic Church and those ideas of how do we become, how are we to live ethically and morally in our world. And remember, a lot of people didn't read. And so plays like this were a way of them telling a story about how they wanted society to work, especially before the printing press. This is from a later period after the play. After the printing press, people be, it, reading and being able to read on your own came about, but plays were a way to actually instruct and teach. So that helps to think about, like, when we think about it, we actually still have that kind of instruction. We call it television, right? Our society still teaches through story but ours is through the television. So you see what I've done here is I've worked through, when we look at this work, what does it do to us in today's society? And I'm paralleling what I know with what I see today. Now you might be working on a, an artist who was big in the 70s and 80s. Well, you know, they were putting out albums and, uh, on vinyl and CDs and streaming services weren't around. So we can think a little bit too about access to our works. Who has access and how does that happen? Okay, 
Describe how the selected creative work has shaped the values of a creator's culture. Well, one of the things about this is, is I, I would go back to this idea of the rhetoricians. Who is in control of who tells the story, right? So this, for, for this particular play, were the businessmen of the Netherlands. They were, they were incredibly important because of the tulip trade. They were uh, big spice merchants, especially with their influence uh, in Southeast Asia. And so their work was about putting forward not just their ideas about business, but their ideas of how society should work. So that's important to understand. What is the subject of the creator's work? Well, in this particular case, we know that they were very religious because they chose a religious theme. So despite the fact that these were businessmen, they were also very religious and their society was as well. So that's incredibly important to the way we look at those cultures from those middle age periods in Europe. So who's the audience? Pretty much everybody. The rhetoricers just let everybody in. It was an idea of who we would get to see these stories. Uh, sometimes they would even be, be be performed in churches. And how does the creator's choice of medium affect how the work is experienced? Well, remember, I just I talked about the fact that people didn't know how to read. And so when they would come to see these plays, they were learning about a tale about a woman who was tempted away. That's a very instructive thing. When would might you be tempted? It was something that they would talk about in the square. They would talk about the different things that they learned as they went through that. Okay, let's look at the third one. Describe a cultural change influenced by the selected creative work. Well, for one thing, we saw through the Middle Ages that people became really interested in the ways that they could create stories that went alongside what the Catholic Church was teaching. So this is not, ob obviously, there. if you are have ever in, come across uh, anything from the Catholic Church, this is not something that is taught or thought about. This was a story that the Dutch society came up with to talk about principles in what they were hearing in church. So it was like a story uh, like a, a, a story that they might see like in a film today. We have if you think about it, we have Hallmark films that push family values. These are films that are for the whole family. That's a value oriented picture. Marieke von Nijmegen was kind of the same thing. It was the Hallmark film of their time. So that's a cultural change that's indicated by that. They were telling stories that uh, sort of for the whole family, family entertainment, if you will. Explain how a version of the selected creative work may be expressed differently by another culture. Well, here we have a very interesting conversation because we today, Marieke von Nijmegen is a pretty hard play to put on because nobody's really interested in, in learning about this particular thing. But I will tell you, there's a part of Marieke von Nijmegen that I think we would express very differently. At the end of the play, it says that she's dropped from 70 feet and she survives. It's this big spectacle. And nobody really knows how they did it in the rhetoricers day, but wouldn't it be interesting? Let's think about us. What do we value? What's something that we could do? I would suggest something like Cirque du Soleil. So what I'm doing here is I'm synthesizing two ideas. So I'm, you know, when you think about Cirque du Soleil and somebody uh, using a silks to drop, it's really spectacular. So how could I do that in my culture? That's what I would do. So what you're doing here is you're thinking outside the box. This is something that you'll hear in the workplace, right? Let's get people to think outside the box. How might it work today from a different style? So if you're using a musician, how could you, how would somebody from a different style do it? A cover, if you will. If you're doing a, an author, how might somebody rewrite that story as a film? How would you adapt a screenplay? Think of it as adaptation. It's the merging of ideas into something new. 
And finally, describe the interpretation of the selected creative work based on varying cultural values. Well, pretty much today, I don't think we would have a lot of connection with this idea that the devil has tempted us away for seven years. But if you think about it, we do have people who we lose for periods of time to things like addiction and to mental illness. When we lose people, not because they are evil, but because something draws them away. And then with help, they are loosed from those bonds. That's something I think we can relate to. So when we think about the interpretation, I think that could be a way that we interpret it differently. That we look at it not just as the devil tempted her away, but things tempt us away in life. What is that culture? What is another culture's way of looking at that particular idea? And that's what you're going to be doing with your works. So what's the core idea? That's the first step. And then how can I synthesize that with something else to get that done? I hope that's helpful. As always, if you have any questions, let me know.